What if I told you that this wasn't the origins of the ferry across the Mersey? What if I told you that just 10 minute walk from here is the oldest standing building, not only on the Wirral, but also Merseyside. And that is the origins of the ferry across the Mersey. Let's go and have a look. Good morning and welcome back to the channel. So I'm doing the Whittle Coastal Walk today. I did a section of this a while back from West Kirby back to Wallasey. Today I'm going to start at something called the Birkenhead Priory which is the oldest standing building, I've been getting my teeth in, <laughs> um, not only on the Wirral but also Merseyside. Um, back in the 1100s, something like that, um, the monks built the priory where it was. They used to help travellers stay over. They ran the first ferry across the Mersey, right up until about the 50s, I believe. I'll double check when I get there. So yeah, they helped travellers, they ran the ferry, they prayed, they had a dance. I don't know if they danced. But yeah, 10 minutes from where I started, near Woodside, which is that time of recording, shut for refurbishment. But um, let's go and see what this priory is all about. Right, well, if you can hear me over camel heads, behind me, I think it's called St. Mary's Tower, and you can actually go to the top and have a look over Birkenhead and the Mersey. So I'm just gonna have a look around the rest of the site first, and then I'm going up, and I'll show you what it looks like.
say Abbey, Birkenhead Priory, oldest standing building in all of Merseyside. Built by the Benedictine monks from around the 1100s. And even though I said they ran the ferry to about the 50s, obviously that was nonsense. I'm fluent in nonsense. It was around about the 1500s they were forced out of here by a king change. Um, so they stopped doing it in the 1500s. It's an amazing building. It's free to get in. There's 101 steps to the top of the tower. So if, well, if you don't like heights, you're not doing it anyway. Um, but just so you know, there's 101 steps. The staff here are lovely. Um, they do make you feel like you're on a school trip and you haven't done your homework. Um, <laughs> but they're just passionate about what they're doing and what they're helping preserve. Um, but they're lovely and they're helpful. Um, they're not in your face trying to give you the information. If you want it, they'll give it you. Um, but they're happy just to let you walk around and experience what is an absolutely amazing place to visit. Thumbs up from Marching with Mike. Give it a try. So now, from here, the walk starts. I'm going back the way I came, back towards Woodside Ferry. And then I'm going to continue along the coastal path back to Wallasey. So I'll go past the one o'clock gun the Seacombe Ferry. Um, it's hot, it's Sunday. I'll probably take in a couple of pubs along the way as well. Purely just to rehydrate, you understand. Then a quick visit to Vale Park, which has got its own little bit of history. Um, we may find the odd mermaid along the way. Um, and the end point, really, um, is gonna be the fort at Perch Rock and then home so stick around still quite a bit to see needless to say there's absolutely no way I could have been a monk let me talk you through the day midnight get up work till three go to bed three till six get up again work all day till nine and then go to bed till midnight <laughs> no chance I mean, other than all the obvious reasons I couldn't be a monk, I certainly couldn't do with that, I need me sleep. Oh, it's a shame. The U-boat story is shut. Probably because of all the, the work they're doing on the ferry. We can still see the uh, the submarine. So, that was the one o'clock gun, which used to provide the time signal for all the ships in the Mersey, so they, they could all reset the chronometers or whatever they were called, and they'd all know what time it was. It was fired manually up until about 1860s, when the observatory of Bitston electronically triggered it for the first time. 
That's like the original one. The original one used to be a cannon that was uh, originally in the Crimea War. I don't know where that is now. That's a, that's a rip replica. So it stopped firing during World War II for obvious reasons. And then it ceased altogether in the 1950s. Now it's just gathering weeds, apparently. Oh well. Next stop, Seacombe Ferry. We got time on our side. We're in a state of hope. I need you on my fire. I want you to know that every time you're away, I long for you so much I can find my way. Everything here At least to stay alive And the time that we share Makes it over five this place on So this place here was built in 1916 and immediately handed over to the Fisakali General Hospital to deal with all the wounded from World War I got converted after World War II ended. World War II? World War I even. And then um, it was actually handed over back in 1920 and officially became Wallasey Town Hall, where it's been ever since. And now, <clears throat> with a little over three miles done, it's time for a pint.
Now it's got a bar, something called the officer's mess, which said beer. I've been the fort years ago. It was derelict and there was very little there for a short time. There was like a wartime museum, but then it just sort of become neglected. You go in there now, there's like a, a snack van, there's the bar, there was a little festival on. They seem to be making quite a bit from it, which isn't bad considering that it dates from the Napoleonic periods, really. Back in, what, the 1800s or whatever, the merchants of Liverpool were worried about an invasion from France because of the Napoleonic Wars. So they decided they'd build a fort here. Now, naturally, there were disputes about who was going to pay for it. Nothing's changed in all of that time. Um, and eventually, building, I think it was back, so 1803 they decided they'd build one. 1826 is when it eventually started to be built. But fair play to them. It only took them three years to build it. Once, they, once they'd cut through all the red tape and who was going to pay for it and what it was going to look like. Three years, whole thing built. It's still standing now. There were a whole section of guns. Um, there was a garrison of men in there. The, the actual cannons were only fired twice. Um, once during World War I at a Norwegian vessel who hadn't heard that the river was shut because of the war. Um, <laughs> it missed and it hit a house over the water in Hightown, I think. Um, <laughs> and the person whose house it was picked up the cannonball and took it to the authorities and pretty much said, what the hell's going on here? Not sure when the second time was, but the, uh, the fort eventually was decommissioned by the War Commission in about 1956.